Welcome back to Bleach Anime Review, episode number 22. This time I'm reviewing the, what essentially is the 11th episode of Bleach Thousand Year Blood War. Which also happens to be the, I mean, the 377 episode series. Excuse me, everything but the rain. This covers chapters... 528 to 532 and the first 10 pages of 533. Roughly almost six chapters. They cover this one episode, which that is shocking to say the least. <laughs> I'll probably get to it when you get to the final episode how much of this arc they cover in just 13 episodes. Which seems like they cover a lot. Yes, a lot. Almost a hundred chapters so far. <clears throat> so, in case this episode. We start with the creator Zanpak Toe, right after he said each go back. He talked briefly talk to Renji, he's like, oh, we need to find himself. And he ends up, we kind of, we cut back to the Kuzaki clinic. We see his father, which I had to look this up, who actually voiced him. <clears throat> it's the same actor voices Kapachi, Patrick Stoltz. And instead of basically hanging out there, he goes to Ugi, his boss, who's kind of like a big customer here, monster, she's hot too. And I remember basically when she first hit shoes in the last season, she had this thing where she, whenever her son's off, put, put, put something, take, take, takes off her hat and goggles, I think her gloves too, and basically put on apron for her son. And then, of course, basically her son, her son telling Ichigo, don't you dare fall off my mom. <laughs> yeah. And it's been obvious hints that Ichigo's father may have a thing for her, but it's never really gone anywhere that I can think of. Like, there was hints of it in, I think, in the full bringer, but not this one. So, he proceeds to take a shower, change clothes, like, like he's like, and of course she hits him because basically it comes to him because, not just because basically missing work, but because of the fact that, because she's kind of like a big sister to him. And all of a sudden, his father shows up in a silver regard. Yes, because basically, Ishin, Ichigo's father, was a soul reaper. So, <laughs> they proceed to, he, like, he's there very briefly because he's knocking on the door. Apparently, U Uja didn't see him because he's in, basically, soul reaper outfit. So, no, he, he, she, she doesn't have, she can't exactly see him in that particular form. Shinichi proceeds to actually leave behind his, his substitute silver badge, which he will get that back, don't worry. Probably for the next episode, because I read apparently that, that happens in 537. So then Ichigo and his father proceed to chat. And Ishin reveals the details of how he met his how he met Ichigo's mother. We see kind of like the, a bit of flash forward with this flashback. We see Ishin lie on the ground bloodied. And here comes Ichigo's mother. Yep. And her name is Masaki. Yes. And she's wearing a school uniform. And then we cut back. We go. We peel back, basically, to the beginning of all this. Of course, there is enough cut here, obviously. Probably because, basically, we, we, we don't be too adult with Bleach. Just by making sort of an adult-type arc. So, we find Rangiku. Yes, Rangiku. Who, by the way, I should point out, though, in present day, her scarf is around her waist. In the flashback, it's around her neck. If I remember, I think Gein was one key that to her, if I'm not mistaken. And Gein, actually, I think for her, the spy fact he was evil. Yeah. So then, of course, she's lieutenant, and by the way, still lieutenant this very day, despite the fact that she's been lieutenant for a long time. Case Kishin out of a tree. Now, in the anime, basically, he basically mentions he made by his pelvis. He really didn't. In the manga, she threw a tray at him. And then, of course, he made a comment about her breast. Yes, seriously. He made a comment about her breast being glowing. Yes, implying the fact that he may want to sleep with her because she's hot. But in case you're curious, though, no, this goes absolutely nowhere. Or the fact that years later, the fact that Ron Kiku would flirt with the with his with her former captain's son. 
The same may have flowed with her years prior. I am not kidding about that because she apparently just did not know that Ishan, her former captain, because he was a captain at this point, he's not captain anymore, would be the father of the guy who basically be the be the big hero of the whole entire series. She had no idea about that, and she flirted with him. Yes, seriously, flirted with a teenage years ago, and she is like much older than that, though she has appearance of a woman who is presumably in her early 30s, and she's smoking high. We see a young Toshiro, where he is a third seat, and he goes, he jumps on there, he never becomes lieutenant. He goes there to captain. So I mentioned about the whole thing about that he ate his, well, his motion basically in the manga was dumplings. <laughs> and of course, basically, like, you know me, Captain, of course, that con basically is not exactly there in the manga. It's like, since you're a bad person. And I mentioned about, about accidents happening to Soipers. So Isha proceeds to basically go out and investigate himself. It's not, it's been gone for a couple of days. Then we cut to see Soskaisen. In a flashback. I kind of forgot he was here in the flashback. I kind of forgot about it. He's there with Gein. And I don't remember the other guy's name who worked with him too. Where well, they're starting their experimentation of holification. And of course, basically, Ishin goes to the real world. Where the server is there. This is not kind of current town. This is a different place. And I'm like, Captain, what are you doing here? He's like... Oh, I got lost going to the bathroom. That's his excuse for this. Same excuse both in the manga and the anime. And then he proceeds to look around. And of course, there's someone, what are you doing here, Captain? Yeah, apparently these soapers these are depicted here as complete idiots. And if you're curious, is it like this in the manga? Yes, it is. These soapers here, who are not issued, are complete idiots. Then she is attacked by a hot... Basically, someone who was hollowized, like oh yeah, essence of a of a sorp, uh, basically a hollow, but it's black, and using moves of a sorper. Meanwhile, though, before I continue this scene here, I talk about Muski. She comes home, eats dinner with her aunt, and the fact that she's like the only one there because her parents are dead, and basically her aunt is all about preserving the bloodline. Of the family. She's so desperate for that. In the manga. I think it was implied that basically. Uduru's father. Man become Uduru's father. Was more pushing for that in the manga. And the anime more of his aunt. Then basically. Like Ishin is here. And by the way. It seems quite strange to the Ishin. Ishin uh, Uduru's father. Where off in flashback at present day. He's, he's basically has white hair. No explanation for this. Yes. And we see a maid uh, who, who works with Ish, who works with Uru's father. Now, I think this guy is. I think I'm trying to remember this guy's name. I can't remember what was Uru's father's name. Uh, Ishida, yes, Ishida, because of course, basically, Ishida wants. Well, her mother wants. She did the Mary Maski. This doesn't happen. It is weird though the fact that it's like that. Huh. We do see the debut of the woman who I'm not gonna mention basically her little bat her what should happen with her. Her name is Kanaguri and she's voiced by Laura Post. That's a pretty good job. I do appreciate the fact that that Despite her brief role in the episode. And of course the young version of... Now, here's the thing about Isha's voice actor. They changed his voice actor for this this stuff for reasons unknown to me. The original voice actor was Michael McCone. And then they switched to for Christopher Swindle. The flashback one is done by Josh Ketson. Yeah, sometimes Bleach changes voice actors for... Absolutely no reason. Oh, by the way, Kai Curry, this episode is her pretty much her debut. Yeah, it's her debut. Ishida, not really. As for Ishida's mom, she, of course, her first appearance is voiced by Asin Picard. 
Yes, that's who voices her in the anime. Oh, it's um Tosin. Yeah, Tosin, that's the guy's name. So apparently it's implied that she does know the fact that that well Ishin's mom wants Miska and her and him to marry. This is not happening because they each go. So then she has some very weird spiritual pressure. Then of course she goes out and of course she's all about protecting herself, like doing the right thing. Then of course calls Kai to go with her. And of course she proceeds to fight off the hollow hollow wise person. And of course she introduces herself and she mentions Quincy. Now, of course, from her perspective, she thought that the Soapers probably would, he this guy would probably kill her because she's a Quincy. And nope. It's like, oh, you're a Quincy. Never been before. I hope they're as nice as you. Well, not really. <laughs> and this is something though that Sheeta in present day does not like Ishin at all. Like, he just basically hates him. <laughs> Yeah, and this could be the start of the reason for it. It's quite something to say, at least. And that's the episode. Yeah, really good episode. So we have pretty much basically, like, finishing up this. I have approximately about seven more anime left. So basically, during the previous week, this was the last one to cover. So basically, next is basically covering two anime left to go that aired yesterday. Next one will be Uzuki Chan wants to hang out, which that one's going to be the penultimate episode of that season. And after that, it'll be. Well, it'll be. Well. Walking Demons Go Evercon. Yep. And then basically, it'll be on to the ones there today. Okay. Do the next video. Bye.